If you're watching this, I imagine that you have your A-level or your GCSE results coming out next week and you're feeling slightly nervous about it. Well, first of all, please try not to feel slightly nervous. I'm going to be here literally the whole of next week with you doing lives on results days, going over what you need to do for appeals to try and help you with everything. Um, but this video is just a quick five things we can come to expect from next week week. Now I'll tell you what they are. We can expect high grades. We can expect a greater inequality. We can expect lots of appeals. We can expect the newspapers to start freaking out about this and we can expect schools to be very busy. Um, so that's it or stay around for me to explain it. So the first thing we can expect to see is higher grades. Now, not because the teachers have been faking results or looking at the data or giving better grades to their favourites. That's not how things are going to work. But if you've got a student who is borderline 4 or 5 or borderline B, C at A level and you know, on a good day, they'd probably get the higher grades, but if they had a bit of hay fever, then they'd probably get the lower grades. Really, really borderline. Chances are teachers are going to hedge their bets and go for the higher grades because teachers want you to get higher grades. Now, one student per teacher in one class doesn't seem like it would have too much of an effect. But when you multiply that across every single teacher, every single class, across every single school, every single exam in the whole country, that is a lot of students who've been given the benefit of the doubt and probably been given the higher grade when they might have had a bad day on the exact actual exam and got the lower grade. So we can expect to see higher grades. Now, this doesn't mean that you shouldn't have got the grades that you did, you 100% should have done and you should be proud of those grades. But this is one of the reasons we can expect to see the newspapers freaking out a little bit. And this is one of the reasons we can expect to see greater inequalities. Now, the newspapers have already started freaking out about this and putting really lots of uh, overdramatic headlines out. But if you think of a school in a really, really um, deprived area where the teachers were coming in and out and didn't really know the students, didn't really know the students' circumstances, um, where maybe they didn't keep very good track of the evidence because they did a paper and then the teacher left and the papers went somewhere we don't really know. That teacher couldn't really be in a position to give the student a benefit of doubt because they don't know that student very well. Or they didn't have very good um, access to assessment things, they couldn't do all of the revision that they wanted to with the students. You compare that school, that student, to some of the fee-paying schools, some of the private schools, where parents have been paying 10, 20, 30,000 pounds a year for their students' education, and where they've been emailing the teachers threatening to sue them unless they give their darling little child the highest grades, those teachers are under huge amounts of pressure to give the students the higher grades. So we can kind of see already circumstances where two perhaps equally intelligent students, one who lives in an area where they didn't go to the best school and didn't get the best education, is being compared to someone whose parents are putting a lot of pressure onto the teachers. So we can expect to see the private schools, the schools in very good areas, coming out with higher grades compared to those in lower socioeconomic backgrounds. This is something that happens every single year, but we can expect to see the greater gap in it this year. And because of those two things, because of the higher grades that we're expecting and because of the greater inequalities that we are expecting in the results, the newspapers are going to have a field day. They have already started. Um, and they are going to say that, you know, employers aren't going to value your grades as much or students don't deserve these grades. Please ignore the newspapers. It is clickbait in paper format or online format or Twitter format or however you want to read your newspapers. 
but if your grandparents come to you and say look at the headline on the front of this paper please just ignore them the newspapers are just doing it to, to sell newspapers um the newspapers are just doing it for a quick headline they don't know you they don't know the facts they don't know what it's really all about so please just try and ignore the newspapers now we can expect to see more appeals this year partly because appeals are free this year and partly because grades were done on um what is now being referred to as academic judgments and you can appeal your grades based on what if you think there is unreasonable academic judgment by your teachers first of all you appeal to the school and then if you don't agree with that result then you can apply via your school to the exam boards now there is a much longer video coming out about this early next week you don't need to worry about that sort of thing yet which is why the video is not coming out today and then the last thing we can expect is to see very very stressed schools very very stressed teachers now Normally, on results day, it's a lovely day where teachers, volunteers turn up because they want to see their students. You are not normally going to see whole schools full of teachers in a school on results day. There is no requirement for them to be there. They probably are off on holiday in, I mean, normally I'd say like the Canary Islands or something, um, but they're probably in like Norfolk or Cornwall this year um, in the rain but teachers do not have to be in school on results day head of department maybe the exams officer yes so the exams officer is the person who's going to be dealing with first place with all of these appeals but the exams officer might not have quick access to all of the data for example if something has been input into the school system and they want to check whether it was a 73 or a 37 that was put on there and they have to go back to the original mock paper which teacher A might have done and put in a filing cabinet and locked the filing cabinet, put the keys in the school bag, put the bag in the back of the car and then gone holiday to Norfolk, it is not always going to be as simple as go and find the mock paper and check what the actual result was on the paper count up the marks on the paper again and check it is what it says on the system it's not always going to be that simple so we can expect a few circumstances where you need a bit of information on a teacher and they're not available so please try not to freak out about this you do have a bit of of time for appeals and there are different types of appeal you can have a priority appeal or a non-priority appeal you get more time for a non-priority appeal so please let the people that need that improvement in grade to get to university let them have the priority appeals before you put your appeal in now it is always important to remember that with appeals results can go down as well as up so do not just assume that if you appeal your results, it is going to go up. Now, like I said, next week is going to be incredibly busy, incredibly stressful. I am going to be here with you as much as I can. I'm going to be doing lives on results days. Um, I'm going to be going through appeals, everything you need to know. Um, I'm going to be here with you the whole way, guys. Ouch! This is why in some videos I have unexplained scratches. <laughs>